Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video on my channel. In this video I would like to use two astrophotography setups for one object in the night sky. I'm planning to use a cheap and very expensive astrophotography setup for tonight's astrophotography session. So tonight you can capture Comet C2025 A6 in the night sky and tonight I'm planning to capture this comet with both astrophotography setups. But before talking about both astrophotography setups, I would like to mention that this video is not sponsored and not being paid for it, and all products shown in this video were purchased by myself. But now, let's get started. First of all, I would like to start by introducing the cheaper astrophotography setup. So this one is a very affordable setup that is great if you're planning to get started into the hobby of astrophotography. So the mount that I'm planning to use is the Ioptron Skyguider Pro. It's a very portable mount and it's great for smaller telescopes and lenses in combination with a DSLR camera. On the top I'm planning to use the Canon EOS 2000D which is a great DSLR camera for astrophotography because it has less noise to other uh, cameras and it is a relatively new sensor which makes it a great camera for astrophotography. The lens that I'm planning to use is a 75 to 300 millimeter lens. It's a great lens that I really like to use for astrophotography, but it's very important to stop down the lens a bit in order to achieve the best possible results when using this lens for deep sky astrophotography. So later on, I'll have to attach a remote shutter release cable to this setup in order to be able to capture multiple images, but that's basically the affordable astrophotography setup. On this side, there is the very expensive astrophotography setup. So the mount that I'm planning to use is the Skywatcher HEQ5 Pro go-to mount. It's a great and very reliable mount that I've been using for astrophotography for years now. In the last few years, I've even used bigger telescopes on this mount, so it's definitely a great and very reliable mount for deep sky astrophotography. On the top, I'm planning to use the Oscar SQA55 telescope, which is a quintuplet refractor telescope, which means it has almost no chromatic aberration and is very good in astrophotography. So it has a focal length of 264 millimeters, which is great for wide field astrophotography. So this lens is in the exact same range, so I can use a focal length between 75 all the way up to 300 millimeters. On the top I've mounted the guiding system that I'm planning to use, so I'll be using a 60 millimeter guide scope, and at the back of this guide scope I've attached the CWO ASI 120mm mini mono guiding camera. So for controlling the entire astrophotography setup, I'm planning to use the CWO ASIR Pro, which is an astro computer that allows me to control the entire astrophotography setup. At the back of this telescope, I'm using my new dedicated astrophotography camera, which is the CWO ASI 533MC Pro, which is a cooled dedicated astrophotography camera. So this is the setup that I'm planning to use for tonight. So it will be very challenging for me to capture the comet tonight because the comet will be very low to the horizon. So the comet will be in this area later on and it will be very low to the horizon, which means that I will have only a few hours where I can actually capture images of this comet. When photographing the comet tomorrow morning, the comet would be a bit higher in night sky, which would be better, but tomorrow it will be cloudy, which means I will only get a few hours of total clear skies tonight and I really hope that I can capture some amazing images in this time. So these are the two astrophotography setups that I'm planning to use for tonight for capturing this comet later on. So I'm planning to achieve a total exposure time of around half an hour, one hour, something in that range. So this is actually the plan for tonight's astrophotography session. So these are the two astrophotography setups that I'm planning to use. So later on I plan to do the pole alignment process with both setups as fast as possible in order to start as fast as possible with collecting images of this comet because the longer it takes me for setting up the astrophotography setups, the lower the comet will be to the horizon. So I definitely plan to capture, or definitely plan to start with photographing these objects as fast as possible. Right now it's a bit cloudy, but it seems like the conditions will be better later on. So I really hope that I can capture my best image so far of a comet tonight. So this is everything I've planned to mention so far. Later on, I'll guide you through the process of capturing this object. I plan to show you how I'll be doing the polar alignment process with both telescopes and setups. And then I'm planning to start capturing the first images of this comet. And I really hope that I'll be able to capture some amazing images later on. So see you later. So hello everyone and welcome back. As you can see, there are right now no clouds and it's already quite dark. And I've already done the polar alignment process on both setups. 
So here in the background, you can see my smaller setup, so the iOptron SkyGuider Pro with the Canon EOS 2000D and the 75 to 300 mm lens. And right here, I'm using my bigger telescope, and I have already done the polar alignment process on this setup as well. And this telescope is already in focus. So far, everything worked quite according to plan. It's not uh, completely dark, but my setup is already ready for capturing the comet. So definitely everything looks quite good. So right now I'm planning to cool down the, the sensor of the camera. So right now the sensor has a temperature of around 3 degrees Celsius, so the cooling is turned off. But right now I'm trying to turn the cooling of the camera on. So let's turn it on. Let's cool the sensor to minus 20 degrees Celsius. Here we go. The cooling is turned on. While the uh, the Ash computer is cooling down the sensor, I'm planning to move the telescope towards the comet because I'll guess we can already see the comet in the framing. So I've already focused the telescope on a bright star, so it's already in focus. So now we can just go over to the comet. Here we go. I've already uh, selected the framing I'd like to capture. Now let's move the telescope to the object and go to. Here we go. So now the telescope is moving towards the object. I really hope that um, the field of view. So I really hope that I can center the comet in the field of view. Here we go. It looks like nothing is. Well, that looks quite good. So the direction is already good. Oh, it looks like the comet is very low to the horizon. I've not expected the comet to be that low. So right now we're doing the plate solving process, which means the um, the telescope checks the actual position of the tracking mount. Now we are centering the object once again. We hope that now it's centered, but now it should be in the framing, I guess. Perfect. So the object is centered. Now we have to capture a single uh, light frame in order to check whether it's f focused. So here we go. So now I'm planning to capture the first image, so let's switch to um, preview. Let's select the camera. I've selected gain 100, which should be quite good. And now I'm planning to select 5 seconds of total exposure time. The sensor of the camera is already cooled down to minus 7 degrees Celsius, so we have so in a few minutes we'll reach the final temperature of the sensor. Here we go. So this is actually the first image I've captured of the comet. So here you can already see the comet. That looks definitely quite good. So here in the center you can see a few clouds, so I really hope that that's not a problem later on. So now let's take another image in order to center that object. Right now you can see in a single light frame I've captured with the camera and the telescope right now. So you can definitely see the comet right here. It looks quite good. The stars are very round, so definitely I guess this will be a very good image. Unfortunately, the guiding is not that good, and I really hope that this is not a problem tonight. So wish me luck, and I really hope that I can capture some amazing images tonight. After the comet finally became visible in my image, I was able to start taking pictures of it. Both setups were capturing images at the exact same time. With the more affordable equipment, I managed to take this picture of the comet. This image has a total exposure time of 40 minutes. But unfortunately the noise of the camera is quite noticeable, and I'm not really happy with the image. Unfortunately it was cloudy almost all time, so in nearly all of the images clouds are visible, but still you can see the comet. With the more expensive equipment I was able to capture this image of the comet, which has an exposure time of nearly one hour. But in this case, in almost all images clouds are visible too. Due to the aspect that the total exposure time is relatively short and due to the aspect that there were a lot of clouds and the comet was quite close to the horizon, the image is unfortunately not that good. For this reason, I decided to photograph the comet again once the weather is better. If you have already photographed the comet yourself, feel free to write it down below in the comments and if so, feel free to mention which equipment you have used for photographing the comet. If this video was interesting and helpful to you, I would really appreciate a like and a subscription. And if you would like to further support me, you can now become a member of my channel. Becoming a member of my channel would really support me and that really means a lot to me. Thank you so so much for watching and until next time, clear skies, Felix.